Hey everybody, we are on Experiment 18, Part 2, and this uh, circuit took a long time to build, <laughs> probably because I had to space it out, but um, as you can tell, it has grown quite a bit from the previous one. Um, took probably about, I don't know, maybe 45 minutes to put together. Um, it did manage to work on its uh, first fire up, but uh, still took a while to build. So. Uh, a couple things to note. In the last experiment, when we only had one digit lighting up, uh, when we powered the supply up, I was a little puzzled because we had like, you know, maybe two or three segments of this uh, this first uh, number that were lit up. Um, but once I started pushing the one button we had, it quickly took shape and started working. Uh, started to work correctly. Uh, this actually occurred because I was following the advice of the book. And the book uh, indicates, I will show you guys this picture because it's quite useful to see. So what I'm about to show you is the pin layout for this uh, IC. Well, if you want to call it an IC. And this is basically what it looks like. Let's see if we can get that in focus. Mm -hmm. There we go. So as you can tell, if you froze that frame, if you need to look at it again, um, pin 3, 26, 19, and 18 all had a ground icon. And the one pin, here I'll bring it back actually. So this one, unlike these other three, um, these three were grounded through a, a resistor. This guy I did not ground just like the book said, because uh, the author wasn't quite sure whether or not both of these really needed to be grounded for this particular uh, numeral, whereas these grounds correspond one to one with the uh, numbers down here. So I grounded all three of these and did not ground this one. And it turns out, if you don't do that, you end up with those oddities at startup. Because um, once I actually put a, another resistor um, grounding the same number from the other side, it starts up clean. It starts up as a recognizable digit. So bear that in mind uh, if and when you guys play around with this. Ground all four pins, even if there's only three numbers on this actual IC. Alright, so with that being said, um, I'm going to start by showing uh, like basically whether or not this thing works and from there I will actually go into a little bit more in-depth uh, explanations of how our 4026 counter chips and this chip work and what these three switches do. So let's fire it up and we'll bring it up to about 9 volts okay so as you see, we're at least showing all valid numbers before I actually push anything. We've got three eights right there. So, and we're drawing about, looks like around 100, 115 milliamps, which if you consider how many light segments that is, that's not that bad considering, you know, an LED might draw, you know, somewhere in the neighborhood of five to 20 milliamps, depending on how bright you're, you're running it. So, all right, so if we were to push, actually we'll push this one first. This is our uh, clear. So it zeroes out everything. And this guy will increment. Now, I read up uh, a little bit more on when it jumps multiple numbers in one shot. Let's see if it can do it again. There you go. So when it does that, that's called switch bounce. And it has to do with the vibrations in the actual switch, like when you're pushing it. It just kind of double counts every now and again. Um, I haven't yet read up on exactly how we're going to get around that issue. It probably has to do with some sort of capacitor smoothing or something like that. Or um, I know the next part uh, of this experiment is actually going to be leveraging a 555, or in fact, maybe three, as you see here, to drive this system so that we don't have to push a button to count. But anyways, let me just get to 100 here, and we'll see that every time it gets to zero, it sends what's called a carryout. 
to the next corresponding number. So that's pretty much how that works. Verbally, I'll show you guys the pin layouts. So if I press this one more time, it's going to send a carry out. Basically, this is going to send a carry out to this, and then this is going to send a carry out to this. So it's going to be like 0, 0, 1. And that's kind of how that all you know trickles through the chips. So this will go on, <clears throat> excuse me, all the way till 999, and then it will zero out. And that's pretty much all there is to it. Oh, and this switch here. If I were to, if I were to press this, it does nothing, and I could keep counting. But if I hold it, and I continue to try to count, nothing happens. So this is basically a uh, inhibitor um, for the uh, 4026 chips. So it won't allow them to. Uh, increment their counts. And we can zero it out. So that's all this circuit does. And it was a, uh, a beast to put together compared to the previous circuits in this book. Used up literally almost almost all of the <laughs> wires in this guy. And I had extra wires in here that weren't part of the original little kit here that I self-cut. So, I mean, we used a lot of wires. So... I'm going to turn this off and we can quickly chat about how this works. So you're, you already saw the diagram for this guy, but I'm going to show it one more time. And as you will see, there are 28 pins on this, uh, on this chip. And if you look closely, within each number, there is actually a, um, let's see if I can get that into focus, there we go. There's actually a lettered segment like A, B, G, F, E, D, C, and then the little periods are H. So that's important to keep in mind because the 4026 chips, which there are three, one for each of these numbers, is a represented, uh, well, we'll say they're they're powered by the layout of the 426 right here, which, oh, pushing the camera around here. Let's see here if I can put that back. Um, basically, there are a number of pins on this thing as well. There's actually 16 pins. But as you can see, some of them say words like to segment C, to segment B, to segment E. So literally, these chips are designed to light up a specific segment of the given number. So that's pretty sweet because they're pretty much built for one another. And these are what are uh, called a decade counter. So they're uh, base 10, you know, meant to count from essentially 0 to 9 and then cycle back around. And one of the other pins on that diagram, I don't know if you saw, but pin 5 was called a carry output. And the carry output pin is exactly what I was talking about earlier, um, where when we literally hit zero, it sends a high signal on the carry output pin, which um, basically increments this guy. And that's what we have going on here. Um, we have uh, basically daisy chained the carry outs, which are pin five of, of one counter chip, to the clock input pin one of the next. So whenever a high signal is sent to pin 1, it increments the counter for the 4026. What's really cool though is, is these chips know which of the lettered segments for the number to send high or send low based on what the actual count value is inside that chip, whether it's a 0. Like in the case of a 0, we know we would need to literally light up one, two, three, four, five, six segments to actually go around the zero. So literally six of the possible, what is that? I guess seven uh, possible segments, not counting the periods, uh, would go high uh, if it actually had a zero internally. So one thing you'll notice is the little periods that are definitely, um, they can definitely be lit up. I tested that out. Um, these chips do not support those, at least it doesn't appear to, because we only have support for the 
Uh, let me confirm that. It looks like we should have seven segments. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Yeah. So we have exactly seven um, segment outs on these 4026s. So if you want to make use of the periods, um, you're probably going to need to incorporate some other kind of logic on here. But nevertheless, pretty sweet. And um, as we saw, uh, when I fired this thing up, I said, uh, you know, this thing was using about 110 uh, milliamps of power at 9 volts. But let's say you wanted to create a device that used this and you wanted it to be portable and run off a battery. If you used a, um, a straight up 9 volt battery, then you'd really only have about. I think, let me see, I got a diagram on my wall I printed out from uh, basically for battery power ratings, your average ratings. And it looks like you'd only have about 500 milliamp hours on a 9 volt battery. But because we were drawing like 110, 120 milliamps, that's quite heavy for that uh, capacity size. So we wouldn't get much time out of that thing. We would only get maybe, you know, if we did it strictly by math, we'd maybe get like three and a half hours. But realistically, we'd probably get probably more like half of that, I'm guessing. So let's just say a, an hour and a half of um, battery life out of a nine volt battery to keep this guy lit up. So that's not so great um, in terms of use time. So what you could do, and I was experimenting with this, I'll turn the pa uh, power back on just for one sec. I'm gonna see if we can run this thing at, if it's darker, I'll kind of lean over so we can see the lights better. I'm gonna just turn this thing up to like, let's try, let's try four and a half volts, which is right here. So, this brightness level is four and a half volts. And four and a half volts, which is half of what we were running at, that literally, <laughs> a little harder to see, it looks like eights when the light's not on it, but yeah, that literally is drawing only 30 milliamps of current instead of 110 to 120. So like, that's actually quite a bit more power efficient. Now, depending on which digits are lit up, you're going to be drawing slightly more or slightly less. So you kind of have to go with the rule of averages. So really, if we were to go to 888, you'd start to see probably the max current draw. Let's just say that's 40. That would give us a lot more battery life in this thing. In fact, that would give us probably more like, I don't know, like 11 hours or so. Doing quick mental math here. but So you can definitely make some pretty cool um, power efficient circuits with this guy. And in fact, there's a special couple pins on these 4026s that the book doesn't go into any detail on. I looked up the data sheet on them. Um, they're called the um, enable display um, in and enable display out pins. And they, I don't completely understand them, but they have to do with only sending the segment uh, uh, signals that are out uh, when certain conditions are met. So you can let the thing continue to count but not send the output unless you actually want it. So you're kind of saving power. So like, I don't know, I'm, I'm thinking of maybe like a pedometer or something like where you're walking and you're taking a jog and you want this thing to count your steps, but there's no need to show this because, well, you're not like looking at the screen, right? But maybe you get to the end of your, your jog or your walk or whatever and you want to look at it, then you'd like this thing up to see how many steps you walked. So that would be a great example probably. So anyways, this is the uh, this is pretty much all there is to part two of experiment 18. And the last part, I believe, will be kind of integrating these 555s into this circuit so that we can probably run in, um, I'm guessing, some sort of slow um, a stable mode so that this thing will count on its own. But I'm not quite sure how we're going to make use of all three of those because we could do that with one 555. So... I guess stay tuned, and we will see how that all works. See you next time.